Tip seven is to place milestones in your online course. Here we can borrow from the history of video games. The Mario and Zelda games typically begin with a dramatic call to action. The big baddie intrudes upon the idyllic utopia and does something bad, leaving the hero protagonist with a just cause to follow and a problem to solve. In your online courses, this can be mirrored by the outlining of a big project at the beginning of the quarter, the final task that they must achieve by the end of the course, as to demonstrate proficiency and learning. So lead with the requirements for the project and let the rest of the course follow from this. Everything in the way of content and small exercises that your students then encounter is viewed through the context of how this will help them successfully complete the project. Whilst the Mario and Zelda games begin with the heart-pounding introduction of the villain, they then segue into a quiet period of exploration where the hero has the chance to explore how the game works. Contextual advice and tips are provided on game mechanics. This is the virtual equivalent of a sandbox where mistakes can be made without penalty, which induces the player to experiment and explore without fear of failure. An easy way to accomplish this in your online course is to let your students into your course early. Consider providing week zero, in which students have access to your course and introduction material and get to experiment with the tools that they will later use to submit graded assignments. For example, you may create self-paced exercises in which the students post an introductory message on the discussion board, post test messages to the course submission folder, and watch sample videos. Players of the Mario and Zelda games are first presented with a subset of the entire game world in which to play and explore. For example, in the Zelda games, players are initially constrained by blocked pathways and locked gates to, to a smaller game world. The players can see that there's more to explore beyond these barriers, but cannot get there yet. This prevents the gamer from rushing off to parts of the world that they're unprepared for. In your online courses, you can provide a similar structure through staged or conditional release. In my online courses, students in week one cannot access the materials for week two until the next week, and in some cases not until they've completed their assignments. Players in the Nintendo games encounter mini-bosses partway through a level. These are enemies to defeat through the application of a recently discovered and honed skill, such as jumping, defending with a shield, or sweeping slices with a sword. The mini-bosses act as checkpoints in the game. Without the right skill, the player cannot progress. The end-of-level bosses can be only defeated through the application of combined skills, such as a sweeping slice with the sword whilst jumping, the back flipping with the shield held defensively. You can apply these types of checkpoints in your online courses quite easily. One way I do this is through the build-up to a project. One of the projects I assign is for a group of students to film, edit, and upload a seven-minute video presentation that answers a particular question. Rather than just awarding points for the project itself, I award points for subtasks in the weeks leading up to the project deadline. The students get individual points for assigning teams, then crafting a script, then creating a test video, then uploading that test video to the submissions folder. Each subtask is akin to the mini boss, and the project is akin to the end of level boss.